Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, Producing Recombinant Proteins with a Baculovirus Expression Vector System, BEBS. I am Julie Abbing of LabRoots, and I'll be your moderator for today's event. Today's educational web seminar is presented by LabRoots and brought to you by Sinobiological. To learn more, visit sinobiological.com. We encourage you to participate today by submitting any questions you may have during the presentation. To do so, simply type them into the Ask a Question box and click Send. We'll answer as many questions as we have time for at the end of the presentation. You may also submit any technical issues here as well, if you have trouble hearing or seeing the presentation. I'd like to now welcome our speaker, Zhu Zhao Zhang, R&D Project Manager, Sinobiological Inc. Zhu Zhao, you may now begin your presentation. Hello everyone, nice to see you all. This is a webinar from Sino Biological. My name is Xu Jiao Zheng and I'm an R&D manager here at Sino. My work mainly focuses on the design and troubleshooting of recombinant protein expression methods. Today, I would like to talk about the baculovirus expression vector system, or BEVS in short. In this talk, we will discuss the history of bacular virus expression, its applications, and the strategies that we employed under BEVS. Okay, now let's begin today's webinar. The main content and the sequence of this talk are shown here. Let's take a closer look at the BEVS. There are two key elements in the BEVS specular virus and insect cells. I will talk in detail about them in the following slides. Firstly, let's take a closer look at specular virus. Specular virus is a large family of viruses with large double-stranded circular DNA genomes. The main hosts of these viruses are insects. The most famous specular virus is ACMNPV. This virus is harmless to human, making it a suitable vector for recombinant expression. In fact, most exp expression vectors we use in the BAS are engineered based on the ACMNPV genome. Once the host is infected, the physiological process of the virus is divided into four phases. This figure shows the genes that are uh, transcribed in different phases. Let's review the replication cycle of the bacular virus. Infection occurs when a larva consumes inclusion bodies, which travel to the midgut. The alkaline environment of the midgut causes the occlusion bodies to dissolve, releasing the occlusion-derived viruses, or ODVs. ODVs access the columnar cells. Nuclear capsid is released, migrates to the nuclear to deliver the viral genome, and a cascade of gene expression events starts. Bodied virus production begins between 6 and 24 hours, causing a systemic infection of the host. During the very late phase, nuclear capsides are retained in the nucleus, and the ODVs are embedded within a crystalline matrix of polyhedron to form occlusion bodies, which will be released after cell lysis. The occlusion bodies persist stable in the environment, waiting for the next susceptible host. Our understanding of bacular virus is derived from a long history of research. The topic was first reviewed in 1953. In 1971, ACMNPV was discovered. Virus particles were isolated in 1973. Subsequently, more information such as the virus structure, life cycle, genome map, and physiology was obtained, 
which was helpful for the development and modification of recombinant vector virus vectors. In the history of vector development, linearization of the ACMNPV genome was regarded as a milestone. The established vector was then used to express recombinant proteins. Human beta interferon was the first protein produced successfully by the BAFs. Since then, many researchers have contributed towards improving the performance of this system. A major improvement was the generation of an ACMNPV backmeat. The backmeat can be applied and modified in E. coli, which makes it much easier to use. With more research, various expression systems were established, such as flashback, bigback, and smartback. All of them are commercial systems. You can find, the, find them online. BAFS has become a universal platform to express recombinant proteins, which find use in drug discovery, structural analysis, vaccine development, and other applications. Now let's have a look at the host. In vitro insect cell culture has a long history. In 1915, German scientists cultured spermatates. The cells could be maintained for several days in vitro, but no cell division was observed. A major breakthrough came in 1959. Then scientists successfully established the first cell line, derived from ovarian tissue. It had been cultured for more than 30 generations. In 1962, scientists successfully established another cell line, again derived from ovarian tissue, which had been continuously passaged for 44 generations. With the development of insect cell culture technology, scientists established the SF21 cell line from ovarian tissue in 1970. Confirmed its doubling time and reported that it was sensitive to ACMNPV. In 1983, the SF9 cell line was derived from SF21 and subsequently applied for recombinant expression. In 1986, the TN5B1 cell line was established from embryo tissue and the TN5B14 cell line was cloned from TN5B1 in 1994. In Vitrogen applied for a patent on this cell line and registered it under the trademark name HI5. HI5 cells display a high expression level and are widely used for recombinant protein expression. More recently, in 2010, the AO38 cell line was established from embryonic tissue. These cells are highly sensitive to ACMNPV and show a higher protein expression level than SF9 and HI5 cells, which is su suggestive of their potential. However, no commercial AO38 cell line has been developed yet. Currently, three commercial insect cell lines are widely used, SF21, SF9, and HI5. SF9 is suitable for producing baculovirus expression proteins and performing the plaque assay. Both SF21 and HI5 can be used to express intracellular and secreted proteins. According to our experience, Recombinant protein yield is usually higher in HI5 than in SF9. So, HI5 cells are mainly used for protein production here at Steno Biological. We have briefly covered the two major components of the BAFs. Now, let me show you how the system works. 
Before we do that, I think it's necessary to quickly review the common hosts used for recombinant protein expression. Currently, there are four major expression hosts: bacteria, yeast, mammalian cells, and of course, insect cells. Each system is unique and can be used to recom recombine expressions. The host cells used by the bacterial expression system are simple organism, usually E. coli. The, the advantages of this system include cost effectiveness and high yield, but the limitations of bacterial render the system unsuitable for proteins that require post-translational modifications. Yeasts have the capacity for post-translational modifications, but their glycosylation type is high metals. Mammalian cells also have the capacity for post-translational modifications, but the system is costly and not suitable for producing intracellular proteins such as structural proteins, enzymes, and transcription factors. The BAFs, by contrast, is more widely used for expression both intracellular and secreted proteins. The target protein will be trans opposed to translationally modified and high destiny cell culture can be achieved. Baclovirus expression vectors can accommodate large fragments of foreign genes, accommodating large molecular weight proteins and complexes. Compared with mammalian cells, insect cells are easier to transfect and therefore easier to scale up. Having introduced the components and advantages of the system, Let's look at the application of the BAFs. It has been successfully applied to express various proteins and provides sufficient materials for developing vaccine in the forming of virus-like particles, or VRPs. For example, Celerix is a vaccine developed by GSK using the BAFs to form an immunogenic VLP with no effectivity. It's the first commercial human vaccine produced using the BAFs. This system can also provide raw materials to develop diagnostic regions. For example, TPO protein, a key antigen to detect autoimmune thyroid diseases. John Sato successfully expressed human TPO using the BAFs. The recombin uh, recombinant protein had high enzymatic activity and reacted with its corresponding substrate. It was developed into a detection kit and has now become a standard method for the clinical detection. BAFs also provides sufficient amounts of soluble proteins with post-translational modification for structural biology. Unlike proteins expressed in mammalian cells, the post-translational modification in this system don't significantly affect the structural analysis, especially for X-ray crystallography. The recombinant proteins can be folded better in this system while retaining its enzyme activity. In addition, the BAFs can be used to develop biological drugs and biomaterials. Recombinant expression in the BAFs involves vector construction, host transfection or transformation, protein purification, and other steps. Different proteins require different design and production strategies. And we will, uh, we will talk more about that later. Recombinant expression has significant advantages over extraction from natural sources, including unrestricted protein abundance, free from animal-derived components, high yield, and minimum batch-to-batch -batch variations. Hence, many researchers expand the efforts to optimize the exp expression system for better recombinant expression. 
The valves used in sinobiological is based on the back-to-back -back system. A flowchart of this process is presented here. Briefly, a gene is inserted into a primary vector, which is subsequently cloned into a secondary vector, known as backmeat. Backmeat is transfected into insect cells to obtain generation 1 bacular virus, named P1. The P1 virus is amplified in insect cells to achieve a suitable titer, which is then used to infect insect cells for protein expression. This back-to-back -back system has been adapted to express various proteins, include secreted intracellular or membrane bound. One drawback of this system is the long duration, mainly because the process is different from other systems. There are several key factors in the whole process. The first is the back meat. It's so large that it's prone to accidental breakage. You should be careful. The second factor is the selection of host cells. In some cases, different cells have different effects on the expression of the same protein. Chromatography method depends on the construct design and protein characteristics. Please ensure that it's appropriate for the target protein. Now, Let's look at the types of proteins that are suitable for expression using the bats. We know that bacterial virus have a biophysic replication cycle, bodied virus and occlusion-derived virus. Hence, the virus can be used to recombinantly express both the secreted and intracellular protein. For example, our product IL-9 is a secreted product of the BAFs. The extra extracellular domain of transmembrane proteins such as HA and NA of influenza viruses can also be expressed using this system. Likewise, the expression of intracellular proteins, especially kinases, will succeed more likely if the BAFs is used. It also provides a good alternative for the recombinant expression of transcription factors, which is usually challenging in other systems. Researchers use the BAS for VLP assembly, large proteins, or complexes. Because of the high culture destiny, simple transfection method, and the easy of scale up, this expression platform can provide more materials for the purification of transmembrane proteins. Now, let's look at some of the applications of the BAFs in recombinant expression. To obtain fully functional recombinant proteins, a systemic design is required for each step from construct design to protein purification. The first thing you need to study is the target protein. Information such, such as the subcellular location, molecular weight, PI, and instability index is needed for construct design. Based on this, we can decide whether BAVS is the best choice for the for the recombinant expression and get a fair idea about the difficulty involved. Once the construct is determined, perform a pilot study to understand if the strategy is workable. If the result shows that the strategy can work well, large-scale production can be implemented as needed. Now, we will describe four case studies to demonstrate key features of recombinant protein expression using the BAFs. Look at the left side of the slide. Here we try to express the extracellular region of a transmembrane protein as a secreted type. 
We tried the forest first. As you can see in this image, no target band was observed, indicating failure of the expression. A hydrophobicity analysis of the target sequence revealed that there are strong hydrophobic region in the intern. We removed it from our construct and tried again. As shown in this SDS page, a truncated protein was successfully expressed at a purity above 95%. What we learned from this case was that hydrophobicity or other structural features such as high disorder may be detrimental to recombination expression. If these regions are not directly involved in protein function, they can be removed during construction. Insect cells are often used to produce large molecular weight proteins, such as FASN. It has five functional regions with a molecular weight of 273 kilodalton. The four last protein was expressed. It's low yield and less than 0.5 mg per milliliter and a purity of only 70%. An alternative approach is to express a domain of interest rather than the four last protein. In this case, however, the truncated protein was not feasible because of the low yield and high de degradation. Finally, by splicing the sequences encoding our interested region, combine them with a linker, we successfully obtained a high yield and high purity protein. The lesson we learned from this case was that truncation is sometimes not a good solution and may even make things worse. If expression of the fallout and the truncated version are both not feasible, splicing may be a good option. Some proteins require certain oligomeric formations to be functional. For example, the human FAP exists as a homodimer. Caution should be exercised during purification because we have to ensure protein activity. We must check the protein fractions with the correct oligomeric status. In this case study, a his-tagged protein was expressed using the BAFs. A nickel affinity Aluate contained a mixture of its monomer and dimer. Because the protein is active as a dimer, a second gel filtration purification step was required to enrich the dimer. The dimeric confirmation of the final product was confirmed by HPLC. The protein exhibited reproducible enzymatic activity across two different batches. Extraction of transmembrane proteins is difficult. Different membrane proteins have different detergent preference. In this example, a single pass transmembrane protein was expressed using the BAPS. The target protein was poorly extracted using detergent formula 1, and no purified protein was obtained. Optimizing the detergent formula enhanced protein extraction. Finally, DGM was used instead of detergent formula 2 to stabilize the final product. Sometimes, optimizing a single condition doesn't work. We must optimize the overall strategy, like in this case. The target protein was a transcription factor. Sequence anal analysis revealed several risk points, including high existing content, high disorder, and poor stability. 
We feel a GST tag to the intern to facilitate protein expression. The results of the pilot study show that the protein was soluble, but affinity chromatography has no effect. Worst of all, significant degradation could be observed. We feel the GST tag to the center now. The results of the pilot study showed improvement in expression. The phonetic chromatography was good, and the illusion to contain the intact protein was limited degradation. Then we tried to increase the culture volume. Protein degradation was observed again, indicating that a small, a small culture volume is necessary to keep the protein stable. Lastly, the stability test showed that high concentration of salt was necessary as well. That's all that I wanted to say about the bath. Now, I would like to take a few minutes to quickly introduce Sino Biological. Sino Biological is headquartered in Beijing Economic Technological Development Area, and we have established subsidiary, subsidiaries in the United States, Europe, Japan, as well as Taizhou and Suzhou in China, and branches in Shanghai and Guangzhou. In addition, the company has dozens of authorized uh, distributors around the world to provide customers with more cleaner and efficient service. service. Sino Biological is committed to providing high-quality recombinant protein and uh, antibody regions and being a one-stop one -stop technical services shop for life science researchers around the world. CRO technology services mainly include the production of recombinant proteins and recombinant antibodies, antibody development, and bioassays, and so on. In addition, we provide an integrated service package to assist pharmaceutical companies and biotechnology institutions with preclinical stage development particularly monoclonal antibody drug screening. Products that include recombinant proteins, antibodies, genes, ELASA kits, cultural medium, and transfection regions. More than 50,000 products are available online. Our products are widely used in molecular biology, cell biology, immunology, stem cell research, and other branches of the life sciences. Our customers hail from more than 90 countries and regions around the world, and our products have been cited in many top journals. Our company is fully qualified. That's all for today's presentation. Thank you for your kind attention, and I would be happy to take any questions. Thank you, Zhu Zhao, for your informative presentation. We will now start the live Q&A portion of the webinar. If you have a question you'd like to ask, please do so now. Just click on the Ask a Question box located on the far left of your screen. We'll answer as many of your questions as we have time for. Let's get started. Our first question is how to ensure purity of the recombinant baculoid virus plasmid you extract. Okay, good question. Regular extraction methods will do just fine, but pay attention to the details of the operation, especially the process of protein removal. The purity is commonly determined by the OD 260 to 280. Uh, the results will tell you whether there is a RNA or protein contamination is in the plasmid. Question two is, does MLI have a significant effect on protein expression? The answer is yes. 
Some proteins are sensitive to MOI, and differences in yield levels can be distinctly observed when MOI gradients are made. Therefore, it's necessary to try a gradient of the MOI to ensure that we can choose a more appropriate expression condition. Okay. Um, and question three is, how can recombinant protein production be increased? Hmm, good question. There are three common approaches it's possible to modify the construction, as in the case we have just mentioned, such that changing the location of the GST allows for better expression. You can also track it if there are some de detrimental regions, as we shown in the slide. If your protein is uh, secreted, you can alter the signal peptide. In addition, to these uh, aforementioned approaches, other approaches were are worth trying too. You can do what you can and uh, try your best. Wonderful. Uh, question four is, do you have a good solution to the phenomenon of cell clumping? Okay, mm, I didn't notice a relationship between the fraction of cell clumping and the level of protein expression. Uh, if the expression level is not affected, let it be. Uh, if cell clumping is already interfering with recombination expression, uh, anti-clumping supplements can be tried. Question five is, I wanted to make a fusion expression of different segments. Is there anything to be concerned about? Okay, if the fragments are from the same protein, the relative positions of the fragments should follow the original order. If the fragments are from different proteins, attention needs to be paid to the expose of the terminals. Linkers between different segments need to be considered as, uh, as do length and types. Question number six is, what is the maximum cultural volume you can achieve and how many viruses would you add? Uh, the maximum volume is uh, 1,500 liter. The volume of viruses and it depends on the virus titer. I can't give you the uh, certain... Um, I can give you a certain uh, number and tell you how liter or which liter or how much uh, you can add in the volume. Question seven is, I would like to move the label from terminal N to terminal C. Does this have a significant effect on protein expression? Uh, yes, the impact could be significant. As described in the case of our webinar, we've used a GST tag to the N terminals and affinity autographic had no effect and the significant degradation was observed. We changed the location of the GST and we purified the protein to high purity. That is why we recommend a pilot study. This is a valuable way to check your strategy design. Perfect, and it looks like we have time for one more question. Question number eight is, does cyanobiological accept packaged baculoviruses for protein expression? Uh, for, some, uh, for some routine uh, protein expression projects, uh, we can also directly use client-made baculovirus for protein expression. Also, in this instance, we will con communicate with the client about the purification strategy and the final delivery format based on the actual characteristics of the protein.
Well, thank you again, Zuja, for your time today and your important research. We would also like to thank LabRoots and our sponsor, Sinobiological, for underwriting today's educational webcast. Before we go, I'd like to thank the audience for joining us today and for their interesting questions. Questions we did not have time for today and those submitted during the on-demand period will be addressed by the speaker via the contact information you provided at the time of registration. This webcast can be viewed on demand. LabRoots will alert you via email when it's available for replay. We encourage you to share that email with your colleagues who may have missed today's live event. Until next time, goodbye.